40, verse number one. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me out from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, <clears throat> To those who go astray after a lie, you have multiplied, O oh Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Father, thank you for your word. Bless the reading of your word this morning. Bless the ministry of your word today, God. We just pray, Father, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and help me, Lord, to be anointed to say what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This psalm talks about singing a new song. In verse number three, sing a new song unto the Lord. And so last Sunday, I preached to you about having a new name. We have a new name written down in heaven that comes from our salvation experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. When we are saved, we have a new name because we are a new creature with a new hope and a new future and a, a new home, a new family. So God gives us a new name. Well, flowing out of that same thought from Revelation 2 and 17 about a new name comes this scripture this morning where the psalmist said, you've put in my heart a new song. I began to think about that this week and the Holy Spirit began to really deal with me uh, about that thought. A new song, a new song, a new song in our heart, you know, uh, the Bible admonishes us as followers of Christ to sing. And now some people will say, well, pastor, I'm not a singer. I couldn't carry a note in a bucket. Uh, I'm not a singer. Well, your musical ability, your skill at singing should not prevent you from worshiping the Lord in song anyway, because you're not trying to uh, please yourself or anybody else. But the scripture says, sing unto the Lord a new song. So when you pray and when you spend time with the Lord, singing a new song is part of what we're supposed to do because we have a new name written down in glory as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, lest you think I'm just bringing one scripture from the Old Testament and trying to major on a minor point, Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 19 that we should speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to, to the Lord. So the apostle Paul, the, the apostle of grace, uh, goes right along with the psalmist and says, Sing is a, singing is a big part of our church fellowship and of our spiritual fellowship life. There is power in worship. There's power in singing together regardless, regardless of our, you know, whether you would be on uh, uh, American Idol or, uh, you know, America's Got Talent or not. It's not about your skill level singing. It's about the new song that God, the Holy Spirit has placed in your heart. And it's just got to be expressed in the letter to uh, the church, to the Colossian church, uh, Paul wrote, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with what? With psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Sing the psalms out of the Bible. Sing uh hymns of the church, sing spiritual songs. You know what spiritual songs means? It means a new song that God gives to you. It may be, you know, something that somebody else wrote. It could be 
amazing grace, uh, or it could be he touched me, or it could be I can only imagine. It doesn't really matter. It's a new song when the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about it right now. It's a, it's a, a rhema song, if you will, a spirit-breathed song, because God, and it may, God is going to use that to, to, to minister something to you right then at that moment. And you know what I find? As a spirit-filled believer, many times the new song that God the Holy Spirit puts in me is a song in my prayer language. It is a song in the tongues that the Holy Spirit gives me, and I sing uh, a melody that is just words that I don't understand in my own hearing, but I know that it is given to me by the Holy Spirit, and God is blessing me as I sing that. David said in Psalm 40, verse number three, God put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Church, let me tell you, there's lots of things we could sing about. You know, uh, there, there's, there's uh, lots of things, lots of songs out there about lots of things, but there is nothing any more important that we could sing about than our praises to God, our King, God, our God majesty, God, our savior, God, our provider. He has put a new song, a song of praise to God. So singing is not just for singers. Singing is for believers. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to have a song in your heart, man. If there's not a song to God in your heart, something may very well be wrong with your spiritual life because the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Christian people from the very beginning have been people who sing praises to God. If you have a song in your heart, you'll sing. If you don't, you won't, you know. Uh, you won't sing because you don't have a song worth singing. So the question is, the question is not do you have a voice, but the question is, do you have a song in your heart? And I believe if you will just nurture that gift, if you'll practice that gift alone or at church or wherever you find yourself, you will develop a new song in your heart, a song of praise to God Most High, and you will enjoy the benefits of praising your God through song because God created us to sing. You know, I found a couple of medical reports this week. Uh, Vitality Digest in 1995 reported that a medical study pr uh, proved that singing reduces stress because it forces us to breathe deeply and to use our lungs to full capacity. It relaxes our body and lowers our blood pressure. This report was by Roger Thies, the associate professor of of physiology from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. He said, singing is good for you. It reduces your stress, it lowers your blood pressure, and it relaxes you. Come on, somebody. There's a, a, a physical reason why we ought to sing. It's good for us. Uh, another article that I read this week said that burn victims who were encouraged to sing while having their dressing changed and their uh, wounds debrided experienced less pain and cancer patients saw the level of stress drop by as much as 25 percent and their immune system got stronger when they sang during their treatment now folks these studies didn't say they sang uh gospel songs or christian songs just singing well, if singing the songs of the world can produce uh, positive benefits in our body's physiology, then how much more can singing songs that have spiritual redemptive value have good, uh, have good effects in us as we sing unto the Lord a new song? Music can relieve your anxiety. Music can take your mind off of your suffering. Music can soothe your Tension, music can help you relax, it can ease your pain, and it may even speed your physical recovery when you're sick. According to uh, the uh, uh, fellow, his name is Richard Fratiane, and he was the uh, professor of surgery at Case Western Reserve University. He reported that in uh, 2001. 
Why? Why would singing have all those positive effects on us? Because God created us to sing a new song. So that brings us back once again to verse number three of chapter number 40. God put a new song of praise in my mouth, a song of praise to God. So first of all, it's a new song. David talked about new songs a lot in the Psalms. Psalm 33, he says, sing to God a new song. Play skillfully on your stringed instruments. Give loud shouts to God, for the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. In Psalm 96, David said, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. In Psalm 98, David said, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Folks, I've just read to you one, two, three, four, five, six instances in the Bible where we're encouraged to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs unto God and to one another. I was taught a long time ago, when you're reading the Bible and you find something repeated over and over again, it's for emphasis. It's because it's very important. If God's going to take the time to have his authors through the Holy Spirit write something over and over again, it means it's very important. Therefore, guys who don't like to sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Folks who are shy and uncomfortable with singing, sing a new song to the Lord. It is commanded, it's written in the scripture, and it is good for you. So did David mean we need to write out our own song, a new song to God? Man, if you're a, if you're a songwriter, do it. That's a very good thing. If you could write a special song, uh, you know, uh, for God, write, write music, then do it. But David says, sing a new song to the Lord, not write a new song to the Lord. So what do you think David means by that? Does he mean that we ought to be singing a different song every week or so? Well, I don't guess that would be all bad if we were constantly singing new songs. But if you sang new songs all the time, especially for corporate worship, don't you think we'd get a little bit uh, disoriented? It'd be hard to ever identify with a song if every week we had four or five brand new songs and then never used them again. You know, uh, because why? Because uh, we like to remember songs. Songs that we have sung before bring back emotions and memories and they tie us to places and events. And so we like to repeat older songs, uh, but, you know, we don't want to just disassociate ourselves from all the old songs. The value of old songs comes from the recollection of the good times and the good experiences that we have had in association with that song in the past. They remind us of pleasing things and, and, and good things. So when David used the word new song, I don't think that he meant you'd have to sing a brand new song that you'd never sung before all the time. I think he's using new song poetically. What do you mean by that? I think he's using it to describe a song that is special, a song that is vibrant or exciting, a song that is filled with hope, a song that means something to you right then, right at that moment, a song that the Holy Spirit is stirring within your heart right there. And you can do that with a song that was written today, a song that was written last week, or a song that was written a couple hundred years ago. You can even do that with these psalms that were written by David uh, a few thousand years ago. So it's not about when was the song written, but what does it mean to you? Does it have a connection with your heart? Do you feel the spiritual vibrancy uh, coursing in you when you sing that song? You know, I have a few songs. Y'all know that I like to sing, and I have a few songs that that are that way uh, for me. Uh, I can sing them when I'm feeling positive and up. I can feel them when I'm really, I can sing them when I'm really feeling blessed. I can sing them when I'm down. And I know that uh, they help me to feel the presence of God. Uh, one of those songs, which I guess now is getting to be kind of an older song, uh, but it's open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 
I love to sing that song. I sing it to myself. I sing it when I'm at the church uh, alone a lot. I love that song. Uh, it's an older song. I can sing it when I'm happy. I sing it more upbeat, you know. When I'm feeling kind of down and draggy and a little bit sad or worried, I sing it maybe slower. Uh, when I'm contemplative, I can sing it in a very contemplative way. Uh, so uh, it's the same song, but I can sing it with a different attitude when the Spirit prompts me uh, to, uh, uh, to do so. So every time I sing that, it can be a new song to me. Amazing Grace, the song, the hymn, Amazing Grace can be the same way. When you're feeling kind of down, you can sing it. When you're feeling blessed of the Lord and up and positive, you can sing Amazing Grace and it has a different feeling. It's a new song depending on what it feels to you like right then. So it doesn't matter what song you sing, just sing a song unto the Lord. Sing in the shower, sing in the car, sing it at church, sing it here, sing it there, sing it everywhere. No, I'm not Dr. Seuss, but we need to sing a new song to the Lord. Sing like an angel, sing like a frog, you know, sing like a bird, howl it like a dog, just sing to the Lord, sing to God, sing your praise to Jesus, praise him because he has set you free. So it's a new song. Secondly, it's a new and improved song, right? Uh, there's another way to think about this thing that David said in Psalm 3, sing a new song. New meaning, I just talked about, it's got a spiritual attachment to you and it's, it's a rhema song. Right in that moment, it's spiritually charged for you. But it can also mean a new and improved song. If you watch advertisements much, everything that they're advertising is new and improved, right? It's not old and inferior, like the things you're currently using, but it's new and it's improved. So a new and improved product supposedly does things for you that the old product wouldn't do. Well, folks, we talked last week about Revelation 2 and 17. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. So if we are new, I can promise you that what God makes new, it is improved. You are a new and improved creature in Christ Jesus because of your salvation, your redemption, and your forgiveness of sin washed by the blood of the Lamb. He's given you the gift of forgiveness, so we're removed from our guilt of the past. He's given us hope. We have a future and we know where we're going. He's given us a promise that he would never leave us, neither would he forsake us. He's given us a promise that he would heal us, that he would provide for our needs. So we are new and improved children of God in the kingdom of light. And so as new and improved people, we have meaning in our life that we didn't have before. Praise God. We have a reason to exist that we didn't have before. We have a reason to get up in the morning that we didn't have before. And so since we have a new and improved life, our potential for even newer and better things increases because God is a creative God. God has not, God did not max out his power to bless you when he saved you. God didn't max out his ability to bless you when he filled you with the Holy Ghost. That time when God healed you, that, wasn't, that was not the limit of what God can do in your life. That time when he answered a big prayer, that wasn't the limit of what God can do in your life. I'm telling you folks, there is no limit on what God can do. So as a new creature in Christ Jesus, every day brings new problems, but every day brings new potential for God to do something brand new and improved in my life. God is able to do great things in our life if we'll just give him the chance. Since we have a new and improved life, we should be singing praises to God because that is the foundation of this new song that we have in Christ uh, Jesus. Y'all know the song, uh, it, it's a really old song. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. The writer of that song is a fellow by the name of Philip Bliss. A while after writing that song and hearing churches and other people pick it up and take it and sing that song, 
he wrote this. The words of Oh How I Love Jesus are true, but I feel guilty for having sung so much about my poor love for Christ and so little about his endless love for me. So he wrote a new song with these words. I'm so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. <laughs> Amen. I love, oh, how he loves me. And I'm so glad that he does. It's a new and improved song. And then finally this morning, we're supposed to sing because our song can lead other people to trust in God. Back to verse number three again. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and put their trust in the Lord. Did you catch that? David just didn't sing because he believed and because he was blessed, but he sang in the belief that his song would lead other people to put their trust in God. That made me think about one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible, which is in Acts 16 and verse number 25. Paul and Silas were in the town of Philippi. They were preaching the good news about Jesus Christ, and they got arrested and thrown in jail. And it says in Acts 16 and 25 that about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Even in jail, even having been beaten for their faith, they were witnessing to those around them simply by singing songs. But, but, but wait, it even gets better than that because suddenly in the middle of the night while they're singing songs of praise to God, God sends an earthquake and the very foundation of that prison was shaken and all the doors came open and everyone's uh, chains and, and bonds all fell off of them in Acts 16 and 26. The jailer comes on the scene. The man who's in charge finds out that everybody has been set free and he's just about to kill himself because under the Roman system of government, for him to let prisoners escape, he would have been executed. And so he was getting ready to kill himself, but Paul stops him and says, brother, everything is okay. So the jailer fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out of the jail and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Why would he ask that question? Why did he ask how he could be saved? Because he'd heard them singing and he'd heard them praying and he knew the power of their praise and of their prayer had just shaken a prison and had kept all those prisoners from running away and had, had, had done this great miracle there. So he wanted to know about this Savior, about this Jesus, about this God that Paul and Silas were singing about that was powerful enough to wreck a prison, but yet preserve every life in the building. Uh, this God he wanted to know about. And so songs have the power to do just that. The songs we sing every Sunday and the songs you sing on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and through the rest of your week, they have the ability to bring hope to a hopeless world if we're only willing to sing a song of praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Most of you have heard of the uh, department store chain uh, Pennies. Uh, the, the proprietor, founder and proprietor of the Pennies chain was a fellow by the name of J.C. Penny. And back in the 1920s, in the 1920s, he already had over 1,700 stores. That blows my mind. While his department stores had been successful, many of his other investments 
had not been successful. And in the 20s, he found himself strapped uh, financially because of the failures in some of his other uh, endeavors. Then the Great Depression hit and loans got called in early and J.C. Penney was finding it impossible to make his payments of his loans on time. He became so stressed and overcome with worry uh, that he couldn't sleep and he eventually, very shortly, got very physically ill. His family checked him into the Kellogg Sanatorium at Battle Creek, Michigan, which was kind of like the Mayo Clinic of his day. And they began to treat J.C. Penney uh, with the best medical expertise of that time to try to get him uh, through this depression and sickness that had come upon him. But although <clears throat> the reports are that they treated him with the best of their knowledge and he adhered to the regimen that was presented to him, nothing got better and he continued to get worse. J.C. Penney would write this of his experience. I was getting weaker day by day. I was broken, nervous. Uh, I was broken nervously and I was physically ill. I was filled with despair. I was not able to see any hope for my future. I had nothing to live for. I felt like I did not have one friend left in the whole world and that even my family had abandoned me for shame. One night, J.C. Penney was overcome by the feeling that he would not live to see the morning. So he got out a pen and some paper and he wrote a letter to his wife and he wrote a letter uh, to his son and he told them that he loved them and that he expected that he would not live to see the dawn. Out of sheer fatigue, he fell asleep. When he woke up, it was mid-morning and he knew that he had already slept through the breakfast time at the sanatorium where he was staying. So he got up and he went down the hallway just to see if maybe there was a biscuit or a scrap of breakfast left over that he could eat. He walked down the hallway of the hospital, walking towards the, the cafeteria, and as he walked, he began to hear the words of a song that were being sung in the chapel of that sanatorium. This is what J.C. Penney said about that song that he heard. Listen, listen. Suddenly, something happened as I listened to those words. I cannot explain it to you. I can only call it a miracle. I felt as though I had been transported from hell to paradise. <laughs> I felt the power of God as I had never felt it before in my life. From that day unto this one, my life has been free from worry. The most dramatic and glorious 20 minutes of my life were those I spent listening to that song outside of that little chapel. Wow. Wow. A man who had given up on life, thought he was sure to die, felt alone and abandoned. Doctors couldn't help him. He was getting worse and thought he was going to die any minute because of a song. Because of a song, his life changed. And he said, I never again in my life felt worry or despair after that, after that experience with that song. Man, what song did J.C. Penney have heard? Well, his memoirs tell us what the song was. It was an old hymn, an old hymn that they were singing that goes something like this. Be not dismayed, whate'er betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. 
God will take care of you uh, through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. <laughs> Simple words, but a powerful message about a powerful God. Just like the Philippian jailer, whose life was changed by the singing and praying of Paul and Barnabas, J.C. Penney's life was changed by the singing of a simple hymn. Sing, therefore, church, because you have been given a song to sing, not because you're good at it, not because you're a voice like an angel, but because you love Jesus and he has given you a new name and a new song, a song of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So this morning, I just want to invite you to take a moment right now and let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for one another before we end this broadcast this morning and uh, just lift each other up in prayer. If you need me, reach out to me by phone or by text message or by Facebook. Let me know if there's something I can pray with you personally about. But uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you in a closing prayer this morning. We pray for that you would strengthen everyone who has heard this message today. God, hope for the hopeless, help for the helpless, strength for the weary, uh, power for the weak, healing for the sick. Oh God, that you would do it and we will praise you, Lord. We will praise you in the sanctuary. We will praise you in the streets. We will praise you in our heart. We will lift up a song of praise, Lord, whether it's an old song, a new song, whether it's something we write ourselves, whether it's a song in English or a song in uh, some other human language, or whether it's a song of the Holy Ghost, we will sing praises unto you, for you have done great things, and we believe that others will hear and come to fear and put their trust in God as we sing songs of praise about you. Lord, go with us, keep us, guide us, direct us, let this ice melt. Lord, we pray, uh, keep uh, people safe. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you.